Hi friends, good morning. I usually post my videos on Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings, but I'm going to post this today because it's different. It's an RV 10 question challenge that I'm responding to. But I have a question for you. Uh, does anybody know about this? I broke a blood vessel in my eye. Um, should I be concerned about this or does it just happen when you get old? I don't know. If you know anything about that, please tell me. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Hi friends, Christine of Shuttle Bay Beach Cricket sent me the 10 RV question challenge. So there are 10 questions that uh, you have to answer in this challenge. And I have written down the questions. Number one, what's the one thing you would change about your RV? Well, considering that I'm sitting here in the cold rain in Oregon, the first thing I would change is where it's at. It's time to head south. Number two, uh, what didn't you expect when you bought this RV? I didn't expect there to be a dead mouse in the heating duct for the bedroom air conditioner heat pumps. Uh, air conditioning, no problem. Turn on the heat pump, it heats it up, <laughs> and it's disgusting. Uh, number three, the deciding factor for the purchase of this motorhome. I think the deciding factor was having the cash. I didn't want payments. And of course, part of having the cash is how much of that cash you have, so it determines um, probably the vintage <laughs> of the RV you're going to buy. Uh, this is an older RV, but it's a very high-end RV. It cost uh, $300,000 in 2001 when it was brand new, and I certainly did not pay nearly that much for it, but it was still a pretty penny. Um, but um, my advice would be buy an older, high-end RV, um, especially if you're talking about a 40-foot diesel pusher. Some of the other factors, and you know, there wasn't a deciding factor. I wanted the aqua hot heating system. I wanted the um, solid oak cabinetry. I loved the green color outside, and it's not um, RV decals, it's automotive paint. Um, those were some of the deciding factors for this particular RV. But um, the main deciding factor was how much cash did I have. Number four, what's your favorite camping meal? Well, first of all, this is not camping. I love a campfire. I love the camaraderie of it. And those of you who have hung around with me at a campfire know that I love to pop popcorn at a campfire. But this is not camping. So I guess my answer to my favorite meal is the same as if I was at my home in Mexico. Um, a chicken stir-fry. And I'm the cook, so I get it quite often with lots of vegetables. Uh, number five, your must-see destination. Well, I've seen a lot of my must-see destinations, and... Um, not only here in the United States, but in some other parts of the world. So I'm going to answer this a little differently. Your must-see destination should be Lake Chapala, Jalisco, Mexico. That's where my other home is. Uh, six, your favorite thing about RVing. I have to say that it's uh, hanging around with like-minded people. 
And by like-minded, I don't necessarily mean, you know, people who have a 40-foot diesel pusher. Um, I'm reminded of what Bob Wells says. He says, you're a van dweller if you say you're a van dweller. Well, my van is 40 foot long, but that's my mentality. I'm a van dweller, and that's what I mean by like-minded people, people who enjoy the freedom of being out and about on the road. Uh, number seven, your least favorite thing about RVing. Well, when I did camp in a van, um, it's very easy to find a place to park. It's not an easy place to find a par place to park. Um, I'm 60 foot long with the RV pulling a car. And so my least favorite thing is deciding where am I going to stop next. We do not pull into a Starbucks parking lot just because Lynn yells, Oh, hey, there's a Starbucks. I always have to pretty much know where I'm going to stop next before I go. Um, when we're traveling across, across country, we spend a lot of time in um, truck stops and uh, rest stops just because there's always room to park 60 foot of vehicle. So my least favorite thing, uh, figuring out where I'm going to park next. Uh, number eight, my favorite thing to have. Oh, easy. Hands down, all my tools. And I'm talking about in life. I don't care if I'm in the RV, if I'm in my home in Mexico. I, life. Tools. I love tools. And the reason is because I've always got a project going. I'm always doing something. I'm always making something. Uh, I don't want to say that I love it when something breaks down so that I have something to fix, but... I do enjoy the part of it that says, oh wow, I get to use this tool. It reminds me of a story. As long as we're t talking about my channel is JC Travel Stories. I had a piano tour friend. I lived next door to him. I moved in and he was like in his 80s, but I had a piano. And when you move a piano, uh, you have to have it retuned. And... Um, it was a Kimball uh, 88 key spinet, blonde. My mother bought it for me when I was seven years old, but at the time of this story, um, I'm probably in my 40s. Anyway, Hank. Hank the piano tour, and he had, before he retired, been the piano tour for the uh, Portland Symphony. And um, so, anyway, a professional piano tour. He was in the other room tuning my piano, and all of a sudden I heard what sounded like a, a, a scream, and it was very concerning, and you know, Hank was in his 80s, I thought maybe he fell off of the piano bench or something, but I went in there, and he was grinning from ear to ear beside himself. He had gone to the Chase Piano Tuning School in Chicago as a young man, I don't know when, like in 1920 or something. And um, upon graduation, a guy named Chase, who apparently started the Chase Piano Company, gave them a tool, a special tool. And Hank had had this in the special toolbox, a wooden toolbox with all the piano tuning forks and tools that you need to tune a piano. He'd had this, he built it in the piano tuning school in Chicago, and he'd had this tool that was given to him by Mr. Chase, and in all of these years of tuning, he had never had an opportunity to use it until he's tuning my piano. And that's what he was excited about, that he had the opportunity finally, after all of those years, to use that particular tool. Tools. I love tools. I told that story at Hank's funeral, and his family loved it. Number nine, uh, your favorite adult beverage. Well, uh, my favorite adult beverage may be a little different because I don't drink alcoholic beverages. Um, 
I would love to be able to drink alcoholic beverages, but the fact is that I get the hangover before I get high. I get a terrible headache like in 10 minutes if I would have a drink. Um, it's not that I don't have experience. I've been through my scotch period, and I've been through my wine connoisseur period. I've been through my beer period, and I love beer. As a matter of fact, I do drink non-alcoholic beer, and uh, my favorite brand is Old Milwaukee. I, uh, as I said, have a lot of experience drinking. There are several years of college that I'm not real clear about. But the fact is that it makes me ill, so I don't drink. And I stopped drinking when I was 26 years old. Um, it's when I st first started running around with Lynn. And my, my line is always that uh, I couldn't deal with her and hangovers both. But anyway... Uh, I don't drink alcoholic beverages. Uh, Lynn is my designated drinker, uh, so I'll answer for her. I think it's uh, Anejo rum. Anejo is uh, Spanish for aged. If I'm going to answer for myself, I guess I'll have to say coffee. My favorite adult beverage, coffee. And finally, number 10 my favorite indoor RV accessory. Well, as I'm sitting here with warm feet, I have to say that it's my aqua hot, hot water, diesel furnace heating system. It's very quiet, has little fans that blow through a hot water radiator. Um, it's a wonderful heat. And it helps to have um, uh, double pane windows which don't fog up from your breath like uh, it used to when I lived in my van. So those two things are my favorite indoor thing about this RV but maybe the question is about um, an appliance. It would have to be my Instapot. Um, I can cook dinner with my thousand watts of solar with my Instapot and if the sun is shining never draw anything out of my batteries so I could I cook dinner with solar power through my Instapot um, my favorite RV accessory well the way this uh, 10 question challenge works is that now I am supposed to pass on a challenge to some of my RVing friends and if you're watching this friend I challenge you <laughs> and I also thank you for watching hey if you like me give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next please share me with your friends on social media thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.